Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the 12th day of the 90 day Bible reading plan challenge. Today is February the 25th, 2015. Check it out. I know if you've done the reading today, well actually if you've been with us doing the readings over the last what year, you've read over this particular uh, story four times at least because that's how many times it was. But anyway, remember Balaam? Remember the, 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 the donkey that started talking? Okay, so check this out. If you're not too familiar with the story, what happened is um, there was a king, uh, King Balak, right? He did not like God's people. He did not like the Israelites at all, you know? So he was calling for somebody to come curse them. And he heard that Balaam, you know, that uh, God, God spoke to Balaam or whatever. And so he called him. He sent some of his men. He said, hey. Tell him that I would give him all these riches and stuff if he come curse these people for me. You know, so they went and Balaam told him, he said, I, I can't say any more than what God tells me to say, you know. Um, so, you know, no, I'm, I'm not coming, you know. So he went back to say, he said he ain't coming. He said, tell him I'm going to give him, I'm going to greatly enrich him. Yeah, I just need him to come just curse the people and then we can just do the whole transfer of all the wealth and all that stuff. He said, I can't say any more than what God tells me to say. But see, here's what I what I thought about right here, right? I think he was being tempted a little bit because after God, he saw God, God said, no, don't go the first time, you know. But every time King Balak sent his men back, he went back to God and God said, no. Then finally, I think it was the third time God said, you know what, go ahead, go. You know, but I was like, well, okay, well, God, why did you change your mind? But what happened was when he was on his way to go to the king, God sent his angel, put him right there in the, in the room, ready to slay him. Right? He was ready to, he was, he was ready to send him into eternity. He was about to kill his hind pots, right? You know, so the donkey actually saw the angel. Balaam, at this time, you think he hearing from God or whatever, you know, he was blind as a bat. You know, he didn't notice, realize that the donkey was stopping, so he wouldn't die. You know, so Balaam started beating the donkey and stuff, and God gave the donkey the ability to open his mouth. He said, hey, why are you hitting me, man? He said, I've not been good to you all this time. Why are you hitting me? And he pretty much said, because you ain't going. You know, then at that moment, God opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel, you know, and he just make a long story short. He said, if the donkey had not have stopped, I would have surely killed you and I would have spared her life. You know, so he said, when you go, don't you say any more than what God tells you to say. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, so right there, I'm like, okay, he was going, his heart wasn't really right. You know, just by the way the conversation was going, you know, so he had them, them riches were kind of enticing him, you know, so he went there and he did what the king, can I get the light back, please? Baby, what you doing? So, he said, um, he went there and the king said, okay, go up here. I need you to curse the people. And Balaam said, I'm not going to say any more or any less than what God tell me to say, but you can go ahead and do these little sacrifices over here. So he went and did the sacrifices and stuff. And then he went up there and he blessed the people. And King Balaam said, man, what are you doing? I, I called you here to curse the people. You steady blasting them. He said, okay, you know, I'll give you another chance. Come on over here. He said, all right. I said, what the Lord say? You know, go ahead and do the sacrifices and stuff. Yeah. And so again, he come back and he blesses God's people. He said, you know what? And I think he did it a third time, if I remember correctly. But he said, you know what? Go on and get out of here. Go on back to your hometown. Your Lord has. He, he the one. He the reason why you're not getting all these riches. I called you here to curse the people and you blessing the people at, at every which turn and stuff, he said, get on out of here. You know, you take it up with your Lord while you ain't get the riches. It's his fault that you lost him. You know, so, but guys, that's a really good story, you know. Um, but you definitely should read. And I know a lot of times, even in daily life, especially for those of us and those people that have a, a call of God on their life, I mean, everybody has a call, but though I'm talking about specifically those that are in the ministry, you know, um, because God could call you to be uh, 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 a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, or he could call you to be be uh, placed in a political arena somewhere, you know, to manifest his glory. And I know a lot of times we begin to lose sight for why we're there. You know, then we begin to think about our, 
our riches and our paychecks or income or whatever we begin to spend it on ourselves and grant we need to live and God supplies every need but he put us there to be in position for his glory and we are there and we're supposed to seek his face and find out what he would have us to do you know but a lot of times especially people they get higher up and those that tend to have more influence they kind of get um some of them get sidetracked and some of them pass the test but you know they're offered positions or whatever or they're offered a little more wealth only if they would do this just a little bit different maybe not say the name of your god too much just like totally not say the name of jesus are you sure or how about i'm gonna need you to do this marry these types of people you know when our bible clearly what we believe clearly forbids those things you know but for a little bit of extra dough we begin to waver and consider you know and so that that situation right there is no different from when Balaam went and he was stopped in the middle of the road by God's angel he was ready to take his hind parts into eternity it's kind of like the same thing because he began to waver he was thinking about them riches and stuff and not about what God said you know and mind you he, he wasn't perfect perfect by any stretch you know because the scriptures also said that he was kind of um he was meddling in divination and stuff I'm like oh wow you know I hadn't caught that before you know so guys I want to encourage you don't uh don't allow yourself to be led by money and things like that and i too have to talk to myself at times because we know god is good and he's the giver of all good things even money he knows that we need to live he knows that our family need things and all this other stuff but he says seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and then all these things will be added unto you matthew 6 33 go back and read it go back and read that you know i mean he, he is it, he means everything will be added unto you if you keep him first you know and i know it's a struggle sometime you know well not not so much of a struggle but we can have moments that are trying um especially in the world that we live in today so guys i want to encourage you to seek god's face first and always keep him first in everything because he knows everything you need your job is not the source it's just one of the resources that he uses to get things to you that you need you know so but uh that's it for today guys if you didn't do the reading go ahead and get it done invest into your own spiritual life i'm just here to help encourage you and you know just be a source of support for you inbox me leave a message like the video share it leave a comment guys so Oh, uh, that's pretty much it. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. Peace.